For some people out there, Anno 1800 is the ultimate logistics management game where you can go hog wild with efficiency to make everything work like perfect clockwork. But for many people, this game is a beautiful 19th century setting to build the ultimate city of your dreams in that era in. A lot of people ask me all the time, how do I go about laying out my city to make it look really good? I don't know how to incorporate ornaments into my city. I don't know how to make the city look pretty. So I am here today with an updated guide to one of the first guides on my channel almost four and a half years ago with the terrible audio, terrible video editing, and everything else that came along with it back then. Uh, so this is an updated guide for the 10 by 10 layout, including some stamps that I'm going to be providing to you guys uh, to help you lay out your cities in Anno 1800. So if you want to take your city building from looking somewhat bland and basic like this, to something like this, a city with plenty of space for ornaments, greenery, and feels a lot more organic and realistic compared to the big block city that we saw before. Stay tuned and we'll take a look to see how the 10 by 10 layout can make this happen for you. So going forward, we're going to be using the stamps to showcase the 10 by 10 and how it works. All right. So the 10 by 10 is simply this. That's it. That is the 10 by 10. It is a square with 10 tiles inside. How do you know you made sure you got 10 tiles? Well, it's three houses plus one extra tile all the way around. All right, that's it. That is the 10 by 10. That's as simple as it gets. The flexibility offered by the 10 by 10 comes from this one extra tile right there. That one tile lets you pretty much do anything you want within that square right there. You can place almost every single building uh, in the game, except for things like monuments. And there's one other building that I will talk about later that will not fit nicely within this square, but just about everything else will. And you can use this square to lay out your city based on that and move things around as needed. Let's go ahead and place down a handful of these and see what we can come up with. And I'll show you what I mean by the flexibility of it. So we're going to take our stamps right here. Now I've got five different stamps. These will be available over on my Discord server. Uh, these four right here are just four I kind of threw together real quick, but ultimately how you design the inside of the 10 by 10 is up to you. Now I do get a lot of people that say, I use my 10 by 10, but it's just looking like a big grid and it looks all the same. And they're probably doing something like that. Now, yeah. It is very same looking, you kind of doing all the same thing. You're laying it out all together. That's not really what you want to do. Instead, maybe let's try something like this. We'll take this 10 by 10 and then we're going to rotate. To rotate, you use your mouse wheel, your middle mouse button to rotate that around. And we're going to separate that out a little bit. And then we're going to take some other designs and throw those in there. And then, you know, I might do something interesting and split that instead of having it right next to each other. We may split it up or I might go over here with it a little bit. There's a park right there that I left from doing some experiments earlier. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we may throw down some different ones in here. And then how about that? We got something like this. Now we're going to draw some roads to connect uh, this part right here up. Maybe draw that up to there and that up to there. Grab some of our other designs right here and maybe put some of those in as well. Now you see, I've got a space right here where I can't fit a 10 by 10. Well, that's okay. I don't have to fit the entire 10 by 10. I can do something like that and use a part of the 10 by 10 and just squeeze a corner of it in somewhere that where I might want it. Like that right there is a great is a great place for it. You know, I have this offset right here. So instead, I just put the little bit of that 10 by 10 on the edge and I lined everything back up. Now that already looks a lot better than what we had a moment ago. And now let's go ahead and add in some of our initial services that we would need for these farmers and stuff. They're going to need things like, you know, the pub when you have that unlocked. You do, of course, start with a market need for them. Uh, we may need some fire and everything else. We have that going. So we have our services in here. Still, you know, it's kind of plain and boring looking, but, you know, we will get there with it. You just keep adding to it as you unlock stuff. Now, eventually, 
once you get to the uh, worker phase of the game, you'll unlock the temperate groves. I believe this is around 700 workers or so. So it's not that far into the workers to unlock this. The temperate groves is what really starts making this right here shine. It's one of your earliest ornaments that you unlock that really starts changing the look of the city if you start using it everywhere. Start throwing in this right here. And we can instantly see a huge difference in how the city looks. Now it's starting to look a little more green, a little more filled in. We have some parks and stuff like that right there. An instant, a somewhat nicer looking city. And it didn't take me that long. Now, obviously, I am in creative mode right now. If you were doing this in the regular game, that is basically sandbox or campaign. Uh, when you're trying to place down the stamp and you don't have the material to place it, it will simply blueprint that. Or you could turn blueprint mode on yourself and go ahead and lay all of this out. Just, you know, of course, be careful that you don't go crazy spending all of your money on roads trying to lay it out. Uh, but you can go ahead and kind of pre-plan. And then when you're ready to build the houses, you simply use the upgrade tool and click drag to upgrade any houses you want upgraded. Then again, we can just fill in with more trees. It's like instant, instant nice. It's instant nice. Voila. Already looks really, really cool like that. Now, let's kind of skip ahead and say that we are, you know, reaching other phases of the game right here. You know, let's, uh, we kind of advance time a little bit here and just kind of see what the city might look like later on when we have workers and artisans. And you can see, it looks really cool. It's going to look really, really nice no matter what we do with it because of all the extra space. It's the extra space that really makes it nice and useful. Now, besides just the pretty factor of it, what's, about, what's more of a useful factor? Well, we talked about the uh, power plants and stuff. Obviously, trains are one of those things a lot of people are like, oh god, I have to have trains. I need space for railroads now. Well, that's where this layout comes into play. I can take out some of those trees. I left that little space right there. I left that right there, and now I can pull a uh, train track up through there. I need a power plant. Not a problem. I can take out a few houses, take out some trees right here. I know, heresy. We're taking out trees. If I can delete them. And now I have a space right there for my power plant. And my power plant will now supply power to our surrounding areas. And I didn't have to go through and reconfigure the entire city and move everything around. I just had to take out a few houses and a few trees. Uh, if I did not have this right here, it's still pretty simple. I can create that between the houses. Uh, you can see right here, I've got a little... Let's, let's utilize this one right here. I have this spot right here. Maybe I wanted to go on up with it. So what I can do is take out these. Move those houses right there over. Redraw my road to connect everything up. And then if I wanted to drag my railroad through there, I could. A little bit more work, but still it worked out just fine. Now my rail is going to come down between these houses. If I wanted to, you know, maybe pull it on down this way and have it connect up for some reason. We take out some of these roads right here, move these houses down, and voila. Now my railroad connects up. Very nice and simple. Didn't take a whole lot of restructuring to make that happen. And now all of my railroads are going through the city where I might need them to go. It's really simple. There's not a lot to it. Now, I did say earlier there is one building that does not fit nicely, and that is the bank. The bank does not fit nicely within the 10 by 10. As you can see, it actually will overlap the two outside, two of the outside roads. Not all four of them, just two of them. But that is perfectly okay. You know, I can make that work. What I can do is, like, if I want my bank right here, just take out, basically take out the entire 10 by 10. We take out two of the bounding roads. And I would just shift everything over just a little bit. So I would move him to there, him to there. That guy there. This guy can go here. 
We just have to make sure we connect everything up. Take out all of this. All of that. Click and drag to move everything at once. I have to do a little more remodeling down here to get it all to connect up if I wanted to be perfect with it. But as you can see, all of that right there now connects up nice and neat. And we have a bank put in. So quick bit of reconfiguring and the bank fits in really nicely. And I didn't have to destroy all kinds of stuff just to try to squeeze that guy in there. This is why I like the 10 by 10. And this is why I tell so many people who are looking for uh, easy to easy to replicate housing layouts to use something like this. It's because it is so flexible, so modular. You can fit just about everything into it. And as long as you don't go through and try to just plop down everything in a perfect grid and you offset that stuff, you know, you don't have to make a perfect square out of it. It will look really, really cool. This city, this little city I built over here is almost exclusively in 10 by 10. And I think it looks really nice. It's a very nice, simple little town. There's no DLC on this island right here. There's nothing extra that had to be put in here to make it look like this. This is all vanilla base game stuff. And it looks like a very nice little town. It's a great starting point if you're trying to get into beauty building to get your feet wet, basically, and start learning how to utilize space and everything for your decorations. And if you're trying to find something that will help you just in the long run without having to move everything around, this is also a great tool for that because you can modify within your little squares and everything to fit all of your other buildings in. And then just go wild with those temper groves or whatever your favorite ornament is. So as I said, these stamps are available over on my Discord server. And if you are interested in that, the link is down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope this helped you out a little bit and gave you some ideas for how to go about getting yourself started with beauty building in Anno 1800. And if you have some other ideas for layouts or you have some questions, be sure to, again, join my Discord server and ask there. I am always available to help out whenever I can. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.